Now, last year, OpenAI released Swarm, which I did a video on to basically showcase that, well, this exists, but to never use it, move on because it was never going to be production ready. But they just released a new API called Responses, and with that, an OpenAI SDK or agent framework for us to use so that we can easily handle multiple agents. And they also came out with new tools. And today I'm going to show you what it looks like and how to code it, starting with the first step, installing their new SDK. And how we install this is very simple pip install openai agents. And now let's go over the first example. So here I have a couple things that we can go over. So from agents, we import agent runner and the function tool. So I have a simple function here, just guess the weather, the parameter is the city. So we're going to give it the city, it's going to return a static sentence, the weather in whatever city is sunny. So then I have an agent, some of these things are going to look very familiar. So we have the name instructions, instructions are the system prompt, I only want to respond in dramatic fashion, in fashion, we can give it a model. And then for the tools, I'm giving it my custom tool, get weather, but I have to wrap it around the function tool so that OpenAI can convert that to the JSON schema and then run that. And then we have an await runner.run because again, this is going to be run asynchronously on the new responses API. So after I go ahead and run this, it should just give us like a couple sentence structure of how the weather is in Tampa Bay. Behold the splendor of Tampa Bay where the sun reigns supreme. Now it is supposed to say it's sunny, but that actually is starting to get a lot sunnier right now in Tampa Bay. Okay. Great. This is a quick example of how to convert the responses API and how they've made how they made a library, a Python library, which they're going to come out with JavaScript soon in order for us to create multiple agents. Now let's just take a step back real quick and talk about the responses API. What is this? What is that? I briefly talked about it in the intro, and this is the new API. We have been using the chat completions API. Well, now they have a new API, which means this is a new URL, a new endpoint. But my question was, does this mean that everybody's going to have to change all their endpoints in all their frameworks and platforms to accommodate this? Well, all I know is of now after reading some of their documentation is that the responses API is actually a superset of chat completion. So I don't think it's going away anytime soon. Of course, I'm not a mind reader. I have no idea, but I had some concerns about that. They do, however, recommend that we start using the responses API. Now, as far as the assistance API, they are going to sunset that by mid 2026. So it will no longer be in use. Now, what I'm thinking is the responses API is basically all the feedback that they got from assistance API, and they're kind of just redoing it kind of wrapping it in differently and then giving us a new package. And they're probably just trying to improve that as much as possible. And they have also given us some tools. They gave us three of them, a file search, computer search, and a web search. I'm going to go through an example of a web search. It is very simple and it's pretty powerful to use. Then we'll go over that in a little bit. Now that was just a hello world example. But if you remember last year, whenever they came out with Swarm, which was definitely not production ready, they had something called triage or handoffs. So let's go over an example of that and explain how that works. So here I have a couple of agents. I have a math tutor agent that has a handout description where it specializes as an agent for math questions. Same thing for history tutor, specialized in historical questions. Then I have this triage agent that has this handoffs property. And I give it a list of agents. So I can give it the history tutor agent and the math tutor agent. And essentially what this is going to do is this agent is going to take in the prompt or input from the user and then decide which agent should answer that question. So if I give it a math question, it should handle that. If I give it a history question, it should do that. And you may be wondering, well, what happens if I don't do anything with math or history? Well, that is something called guardrails, which I'll briefly go over soon. But for now, let's run this and see how this works. I asked it to solve what is five times five plus four. So it kind of goes through everything for me. All right, but it's yeah, the final answer is 29. Okay, great. But how do I actually know that it chose the agent and the triage agent just didn't come up with the answer for me? Well, we can actually enable verbose standard out logging, and then this is going to show us exactly what's happening. So if I clear this and I'm going to run this again, it's going to give a lot more output in the terminal, but we can see exactly what's happening. Okay. So starting with some trace IDs, that's kind of standard. So now we have the first LLM call to GPT 4.0. What is five times five plus four? Okay. So then it has tools, right? But the first one is the transfer to history tutor tool. And the second one, the transfer to math tutor tool. So the idea is that it's going to be given the choice of which one of these to use. Right. And so then the response from this was to transfer to the math tutor. Okay. So next we're going to have another LLM call with the same input, 
but it's going to be a function call, which is a transfer to the math tutor. And then this is going to actually call the math tutor agent, which has going to give me a response of, you know, here's the text response of how it solved it. Okay. So this is how we know that it actually called the math tutor and not the historical tutor agent. Now let's get into agent tracing and monitoring. OpenAI did come out with their own tracing, even with their own tracing dashboard, but I'm gonna show you that briefly and then go over agent ops, which the amazing team has already integrated with the new OpenAI SDK, even though it just came out less than 24 hours ago. So here's what the tracing dashboard looks like for OpenAI. If I click on one of these, I've ran this quite a few times. This is a simple one. But you know, this is the post to the new responses API. This was a handoff from the triage agent over to the math tutor that we already, already went over. And then the math tutor actually went and here is the response and everything that came with that. So the output, here was the input for the tool. And then here's what we got. Okay, so that's that. But now let's do agent ops. So all you have to do, all you have to do is go to agentops.ai it's very simple. You can actually copy this pip install agent ops in your terminal. Then once you uh, log in, create an account, it's free. You'll go, you'll be here at your dashboard. You can create a new project. So I can come up here, call this open AI new SDK. I'm going to create the project. Once that is created, it's going to give me an API key that you can, it's already copied to your keyboard and then going to open up cursor and how this works is after you installed it, you just import agent ops. I do it slightly differently. You can only, you only need two lines of code, but I like to say session equals an agent ops dot initialize. I give it this API key. So I'll paste that in there. And then at the very bottom, after we get, after we run this, right, this is after we run uh, the triage agent so they can delegate to the math or the history, history tutor. Then I say session dot end session and I give it successful. And this is where you would say, if something were to fail, you can tell it that it would end the session with a failure instead of success, but this is just so that we know it was successful. And then once you've run something, it'll show up in the dashboard. You can go ahead and choose one and you can dive even deeper into everything that happened within your agent flow. Then you can even select on certain parts of the chat. For instance, here, we just wanted to ask what two plus two was. This is showing the conversation in a very nice UI for us. We have the number of prompt tokens, the completion, and then the total number of tokens as well. And then if we use tools, it will show you how long it took and if, whether it succeeded or not, and all the input parameters in the result. And I highly recommend using them. I use them for almost every agent workflow that I have, especially with Crew AI. So I have a link for them in the description below that you can try out as well. Okay, we just went over like the main idea and principles behind OpenAI's new SDK. Now I wanna go over a few more things, starting with streaming. So how do we stream? Well, this is pretty simple. We import the agent, give it name instructions, and instead of saying runner.run, which is the, the basic way we run anything, you say runner.run underscore streamed, give it the starting agent, the input again, and then here I'm just basically printing out all the events or it's like letting it stream. So let's go ahead and run this. And then we're gonna see it streaming the output and should be giving us five different jokes. Let's see if it actually does. Maybe you'll hear a new joke today. So new jokes today, and this is how you basically stream anything. Now, something really cool is they have tools inside of their SDK that for web searching, computer use, and file tools. The one I'm gonna go over is web search tool, and this make they make it so simple to use. I mean, it's pretty powerful, and they make it really simple. Okay, so this is what it looks like. We import the agents, the agent runner, and trace, which, this is their version of tracing and what's happening with your AI agents. But I'm going to say from agent.tool, import web search tool and a type called user location. So I just have an agent where I basically give it the tool. Again, this is a list of tools, but the web search tool, the user location, I'm just going to give it an approximate location within the city of Tampa Bay. Now, what I want to do is search the web for local sports news and give me one interesting update in a sentence. Okay, so go ahead and run this now. There's really nothing too much going on in this. Again, await runner.run. This is something you have to get used to. This is the way they execute agents. So if I open up my terminal, go ahead and run this web search.py. This should give me something with one of the sports that we have in Tampa Bay, one of the sports teams, and give me something hopefully interesting. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have re-signed their wide receiver to a three-year, $66 million contract. Dang. 
Um, but then it gives me some other um, news, like here's the Rays owner faces pressure from MLB to sell yeah, after the stadium thing. But um, okay, so that's really cool. I gave it nothing. It gave me something relevant as well. So March 10th, 2025. If you deal with things like Serper.dev or Serply, sometimes they give you basically the date from the LLM. You just kind of make sure that you define the date. But here, that is already done for you. And this was really simple to use. And another thing I just want to show you is that you can actually clone agents here instead of recreating them. It does, it kind of handles all that behind the scenes for you. That was pretty cool. And also just want to go over Pydantic to make sure you understand output types with Pydantic. Okay, so here I have an output type, you know, my dramatic weather. So it just gives me the city and the dramatic weather as a string. Here is my function that we use in the beginning to get weather. Here I have a main function where I give it the agent. The assistant, um, yeah, the name is the assistant, the instructions, the model, the tools. Again, I'm wrapping the get weather Python function around function tool so that OpenAI can understand how to use it. The output type is dramatic weather. And then I just basically call how's weather in Tampa Bay. We did this before. It's going to give me a dramatic couple sentences about how it's sunny. Now what I'm doing down here is I'm actually cloning that agent, right? So this agent right here named agent. I'm cloning that. I want it to be a less dramatic agent. I'm giving it a different name. I'm updating the instructions and I'm also updating the model. If I didn't update the model, it would just use GPT 4.0 mini. And it's also all already going to use the tools and the output type from this agent up here because I'm cloning it. So whatever I actually have in here is just going to overwrite when it recreates this up here. And then I'm running that and I'm asking it the same exact question and we'll see the difference without me really doing much to this. So hello. So this is the first one, the city of Tampa Bay, dramatic weather, you know, it very it is very dramatic. Then the second one is less dramatic. So it's just bright sunshine is pouring down over Tampa Bay. You know, you can see that there's a difference in the way, uh, way it responded back to me. So this is pretty cool. I just want to show you this, that you can actually clone the agent. It's going to take the same exact properties but you can override any of those that you want. Okay, so now that we're done with the coding portion, I wanna go over my thoughts about OpenAI SDK and some things that I think you should think about as well. So the first thing is, is it actually open source? Well, yes it is, and it can be configured with the Chat Completions API for third parties because they are supporting both Chat Completions and Responses API. However, the tracing, as I showed you, you had to go to the dashboard that is not open source. And then I told you that they recommend using the response API. Well, right now, OpenAI is the only one that uses the responses API, which means that you're vendor locked to OpenAI models. And then the other thing is I never heard it or have not seen anywhere where it talks about context management or long-term memory built in to this uh, OpenAI agents SDK, which means that if it doesn't have that, that is something that you're going to, have to bring in and try to configure alongside of this library. Now, it, it was easy to use. I think that the routing pattern, which you can build a few patterns, you can build all the patterns with this, but the routing pattern, such what they use with the handoff, you know, I think that is a great pattern to use and that can be very effective and helpful. This can be definitely good because it's so easy and lightweight to use in some use cases, but it's definitely not going to fit all of them. So for anybody that tries to tell you, oh, this is the most amazing thing. And I'm not saying that it's not a step in the right direction, but the other thing is you are, like I just mentioned a couple minutes ago, is that you're going to be locked into open AI models. You, you don't, nobody really wants to be vendor locked whenever they're dealing or they're trying to use AI agents again. This was great. Um, I will probably come up with a course on how to use this. They have already in the middle of making this today. I had to take a break uh, for personal things, but today they've already come out with a new update. So if things break, such as guardrails, it broke whenever it wasn't quite working, they may, they're gonna be fixing things as we go along. Okay, so thank you for watching. Here are some more videos on creating AI agents. I have a school community that you can join down below where I help you create AI agents and teach you all about them. Thank you. I will see you next.